a lot. I mean, like, my goodness, look, I'm standing with most of the top young people today. And I started way back in, you know, in the early 60s. So I've survived all the changes in music and I didn't get lost. The key was hard work. A lot of hard work, but work that I enjoyed as well. It wasn't as if I was sort of toiling and, and, and bored with what I was doing. The whole eight years, I was having a good time. Because yeah. first of all, I was divorced and I was finding out what I could do. I didn't know I could do all the things that I did in those eight years. I was exploring. I was really exploiting myself. And I really found that I had a good time learning what I could do and being on my own. I didn't bother that much. It didn't bother me that much that I didn't have a record because I was too busy doing other things that I think that I need to learn about myself. So now It's been 10 years since, yeah. since you know, 74 since uh, you Absolutely. and I split. Yeah. And, um, did you envision any of this? I mean, did you have... I didn't know what I would do. I did know that I could not live with like the rest of my life yeah. because I had really outgrown the relationship, outgrown the lifestyle. And it was so much more that I wanted in terms of just happiness and fun. And uh, that's why I didn't put a lot of value on career at the time. It was just getting out, singing and enjoying it, singing it for the first time and singing what I wanted to sing and dressing the way I wanted to dress and doing all the little play things that acting and singing is involved in. So I didn't perceive the fact and make a plan. It was that I just knew that one day I would walk out of it all and I didn't know when. And that is how I did it too. I just got up and walked out. <laughs> it was that simple. <laughs> a one day turnaround? It was a one, it was a, it was seven years of, of realizing what I was into Seven years of thinking that I could not survive that yeah. time living very long. And the one trip that I uh, was en route, and we had one of our big explosions. And, and when we arrived at the hotel, we were, actually we were opening at the um, Dallas Hilton. And uh, we arrived, and it was all kinds of chaos because we were late. And I took a nap. I mean, we were late. <laughs> and he went to bed, and I said, sleep well. <laughs> <laughs> And I left. I had to leave. That was the time. Nothing was planned. I took no baggage. I took nothing. I took absolutely nothing. I had a maybe a small purse with a, a credit card or something, and that's all. Were you scared? Yes, I was very much afraid. The, the, as I walked, I took the staircase because I was afraid some of the musicians would probably see me and be able to tell like, well, yeah, I saw her. So I took a back stairway, which I didn't know anything in those days. I didn't know. I didn't even know there were back stairways, maybe. I, I didn't think ahead. And I took this stairway, not in knowing where it would end up. And I ended up in the back alley of the hotel, which is really scary. Like, and I started running. And you know how you see the movies? And you, the, the faster you run, the faster you start running. You know, yeah. you continue. And I, and I arrived at the freeway. And I thought, how am I going to get across this on foot? You know, you don't <laughs> cross the freeway on foot. And I just dashed across. I just got across the freeway. And I walked into a Ramada Inn with this big face out to here. I was looking like some horror monster in it. I just said to this man, can I see, you know, uh, the, the management? I said to him who I was, that I had a fight with my husband, that I should be opening at the... I just, just told the truth. Sure. And the man gave me the best suite, gave me security. And I used the telephone to make calls, and, and I eventually paid him. But I just had all the odds in my favor. Are you still singing with the same voice you had back in Nutbush when you were a kid? Same, same one? It's the same one. <laughs> my goodness. Did you take any training at all? No, I think I've, if I'd had training, then I might not be as successful as I am. Uh, I was Someone asked once, um, did I take any lessons or did, could I eat before work? And I, I realized that <laughs> it's what you're taught. If they had said to me, don't eat before working, I, I would have been starving. And, you know, I, it was a time in my, in my life where I could eat and go on stage and it was like nothing. Then my system changed and now I cannot eat before I go on. But it wasn't because I was told. I think a lot of it is mental. You know, some people do voice lessons. Some people need it. I never do it. I never do anything. I just get out there and hit it, and that's it. Some people have uh, three or four different things that they really base their conviction about, their li A, their life, and B, their stage work. What are those pillars around what you do? I'm superstitious. I have to always do everything with the right foot or the right hand first, the right sleeve go in, the right shoe, always sometimes with the right foot. If I'm, if I'm really stressed a little bit, every step I make for the steps has to be with the right foot. Everything has to be with the right. So I, that's one of my little things that I've thought of. Doing two duets with Lionel, and hopefully in the future we, we have the plan to do. He wants to do rock and roll as well. Yeah. So we're planning to do something very much of what we're doing on Are stage together. Are you comfortable together. with videos? Yes. Yeah. Love it. Love it's it. great for me because I'm so visual. Yeah. And it's easier to watch and listen to Tina Turner than just listen to her. <laughs>